Matthew chapter number 15, we are just full on in, in the life of Christ, a very short. It's amazing what could be done in three, three and a half years. Jesus did a whole bunch, changed the world, changed eternity. That's pretty big. And uh, sent some disciples on a road to turn in the world up. Pretty amazing. But on the way, there's some bad guys. There's, hey guys, in your lifetime, there's some bad guys along the way. And sometimes it's difficult to see how to deal with them. But let's see how Jesus deals with some bad guys right here in chapter 11. Matthew chapter, it is 11. Did I tell you all 15? I wrote 15. But it is 11. I apologize, it is 15. <laughs> you have no idea how long this day has been. Matthew 11 is really good. Matthew 11 is really good. We are in Matthew chapter number 15, as I wrote. I was like, where are the bad guys in this? Matthew chapter number 15, beginning in verse number 1. Then came, Jesus, uh, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest profit, uh, be profited by me, and honor not his father or mother, he shall be free. Thus ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition, ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, this people draweth nigh unto me, with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended? After they heard this saying, but he said, I don't give a rip. <laughs> That's in the Hebrew text. You've got to study that out. No, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Let's stop and pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for all that you do. And Lord, we're thankful for your word. Lord, most folks don't read it as much as we should, but it is so rich and so helpful. And we see places like this in the scriptures where we see the importance of, of not being a hypocrite. And, and it's so easy to see other people's sins and so hard sometimes to see our own blind spots. Help us, Lord, to make sure that our doctrine is Bible doctrine and not the tradition of men. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated. I want to preach on this thought, watering fake flowers. Watering fake flowers. Jesus there in, in verse number 13, he says, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. And you know, I was reading that the other day, and I was teaching uh, at, over at the college, and when I read that, it just, it, it, thinking about plants that are, you know, the, you have the wheats and the tares in the scripture. And it's hard to tell the wheats from the tares until it's time to start bearing fruit. And then the other day we got home, we'd been out all day and it was Sunday afternoon and we walked in and Mrs. Grice starts looking around and she took to fussing. And believe it or not, she doesn't fuss that much. At least not when I'm around. The boys are all like, what? And, uh, but she started fussing. I was like, what in the world? You know, so she's like, who? 
who's been messing with the flour, you know? And she was looking around and her, her little container of flour over there in the little mason jar looking all pretty and yet useful. It was, right. it was fine. But everything was covered. The, the counters were covered. The, the dishes uh, it, around the sink covered. The, the, the granite running down over here covered. The dining room table was covered. You could look on the floor and you could make... It was covered. It looked like somebody had just took some flour and just poof. And she was trying to think of what happened and I looked over and there they were. All those flowers that had been given to her when she was in the hospital. And you know, flowers do weird stuff. I don't know which set it was. But at some point, some of those flowers that you guys sent up there to the hospital and brought up to the hospital and had delivered or had delivered to the house, some of those flowers just said, hey, this is it. My time's at the end. Let's make some more flowers. And just... <laughs> and pollinated the whole house. <laughs> you could see it was heavier right there by the flowers than it was. I'm in detective mode now, you know? And, and I, I couldn't tell which one, but it, it originated right there. And there's all different kinds of flowers, but, you know, that's what happens. You know, it, listen, if you, I remember uh, Brother Terry Rigsby, he, he was uh, preaching a message one time, and it was a, a salmon. And the salmon were going upstream to spawn. And he lived up north, he lived in Ohio. He's a buckeye or whatever that is. And uh, so he goes out. Somebody tells him, look, here they come. And so he goes inside and he found this rod and it had three prongs on the end of it. And he went outside and he goes down to the, to the river. It was right behind their house. And he steps one foot in and, and he can just see thousands of them. And he gets his eye on one and he just, pow, and he hits it in the head. It's got a really cool scar. He had it stuffed. I mean, it's got a really cool three-pronged you know, scar on its head. And he said when he picked it up, see, that those, those salmon were going upstream to their, to their birthplace. And their goal was to go up there and to make some more salmon. He popped that one in the head because he was thinking about making salmon too for dinner. And he picks up that salmon and all of a sudden that salmon realizes it's over. And it just starts spewing eggs. And it just is spewing all of its eggs. Hundreds of them. Salmon eggs. The desire is to make something. To make more life to... To try, you know what? When we get sick, we do we do things that try to make more life. We go to the doctor, we take medicine. Theoretically, we do what the doctor says, and you know we're trying to do things that, that'll make our life better or to keep it going to prolong it. Or if I told you you had exactly one week to live, think about how that would change where you're at today. Think about how that would change your program for the next week. You would do things that really, really mattered. That really mattered. Sometimes we don't live every day like it matters. We just waste the day. We rest today, which rest is really important, but not if you just rested a few days before, you know. I mean, come on, man. I want to die tired. Let's do something that matters. Thinking about the flowers and thinking about uh, teaching the other day over at the school, God just kind of laid on my heart. I, I remembered... Uh, you know, because now I was thinking, wow, these beautiful flowers, they were so pretty. Now it made a big mess. <laughs> and so now, you know, Mrs. Grice, she just starts cleaning up, doing stuff, and go get the broom boys, you know, and everything starts changing, you know. It, fake flowers don't do that. But flake, fake flowers aren't really that special. I mean, they are in some ways. I mean, we have a beautiful arrangement back there that was made by, you know, 
our aunt, who, who's ironically we're praying for. She's having surgery on Friday, and, but she made that beautiful arrangement back there. But that arrangement's never going to make more flowers. That arrangement's going to sit static and just do nothing. Years ago, when we first started the church, we were down over here at 606 East Main Street. And um, it, it was just an ugly little storefront building. You know, we're trying to make it look cute on the inside. And it just looked ugly on the outside. So we got a burgundy awning with the name on it. It looked really nice. And it needed something. So Mrs. Grice and I got these big pots, filled them with dirt, and then somebody stole the flowers out of them, I think. Somebody messed up the flowers. And it was so hot because we started the church in June because we had no sense at all. And, and the, between the sunlight just hitting the flowers and also coming off the windows, they were just getting cooked. So problem solved, we'd just get fake flowers. So they put the fake flowers out there and put the dirt around and we're like, well, that looks good. And we just go inside. Some of the sweet little old ladies in the church. We're like getting stuff ready. We're making sure that every hymn book is exactly straight because that's what good Christians do. You don't have crooked stuff. That's insane. We're trying to make sure that the church bulletins were in every chair and they were straight. You don't have crooked lines and all the chairs had to, you know, the backs all had to be exactly right. When you walk in, there should be symmetry in, in my world. And so... So we're doing that, and all of a sudden, here comes a sweet little old lady with the picture. And I was like, she goes outside, and I was like, look at this. She's out there just watering them flowers. I looked over, and I said, I ain't, I ain't telling her. <laughs> she went over and watered the other flowers. I was like, you know, and, and, and I guess I should have said something. But man, she was, she was doing her part. She was helping. I wasn't saying nothing. I, I say too much. So, and, so we didn't think nothing about it. And here comes Wednesday. And she comes by and she's mumbling something like, them flowers look like they're dry out there. You know, they're, and she go, they're pla they look just like they did. They might have been dusty. She go, she's watering right and. So she came back in and she had a smile on her face. She was excited. I said, thank you so much. What else do you say? Because it's a mistake the first time. Now it's just crazy because I'm not saying anything. And so I'm like, hey, thank you so much. You know? And if she had come to me and be like, did you know those were fake? I'd be like, what? You know? <laughs> Why? I Hey, I was glad she was trying to do something. I was glad she was trying to do something. And, and, and it, it's exciting when somebody wants to do something. But you know, sometimes we spin our wheels if we get things out of order. And sometimes we think we're doing something. What do you know? We're having church worship, you know, and we're doing this and we're doing that. And sometimes we're watering fake flowers. Sometimes we're watering fake flowers. And here's the deal. It's too awkward to say something. Here is these, the people that came to him were scribes and Pharisees. These are people that memorize more scripture than you can dream of. These were experts in the law. These were the big chief gyrastacatus. These were the head daddy rabbits of the whole program. These were the religious rulers. And they come up to Jesus and they're like, hey, why are your guys violating the traditions? Because that's what's going on. They didn't wash their hands before they ate. Now listen, we teach our children to wash their hands before they eat because we've seen where their hands go. Amen. We have four boys. Yeah. That's gross. <laughs> we need to like burn their hands before they eat. You know, that's... Like, like they're going into surgery they need to scrub in. You know, that's serious stuff. But Jesus said, you know what? What's going to ruin you isn't, isn't you tore some bread off and put it in your mouth and you didn't eat. You didn't wash your hands first. 
The problem is not with you guys, you religious leaders. It's not what's going in your mouth. Your problem is what's coming out of your mouth. I mean, look at the things that he says. He says, you hypocrites. And verse number seven, he said, well, Isaiah prophesied of you, saying, the people draw, near, uh, draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. He said, you know, you're a bunch of outfits. You'll say to your parents, you know you're commanded in the law to honor your father and your mother. In fact, that's the first commandment that has a promise attached that says, so you can live long. So you can live long. And then you're making a deal with your parents. Hey, whatever I give you, mom and dad, it's a gift. Anything that I profit you, it's a gift. Don't worry about paying me back. It's all good. But then you don't profit them nothing. You're not honoring your parents. You're not helping them. You're a hypocrite. You talk about it with your mouth, but your heart's not in the right place. You do it for show. And you know sometimes, and I'm thankful we don't have this problem a lot at our church, so I'm not just saying that because you're here. But listen, I mean, we, you know, we don't have a whole lot of the showboating. We don't have a whole lot of the, hey preacher, look what I'm doing over here. Hey, hey. Huh? I know when you put names in the bulletin, remember, there's an E on the end, it's silent. <laughs> and Now our folks just do stuff and are pretty silent about it. And the reason is because that's what God desires. You can clean off the flowers on the outside. They're still dead on the inside. Jesus also called them whited sepulchers. In other words... Said you pretty them up on the outside, you make it all look nice and good, you give it a fresh paint job. And inside it's just full of dead men's bones. See guys, that's what's wrong with so much of the religion that's going on today. Is that instead of just being like Jesus, instead of just love, loving people enough to tell them about Jesus, instead of genuinely trying to help people, we just talk about it, but we don't, aren't really doing anything about it. Not really doing anything about it. We need to learn to do something. We need to learn to be genuine and try to help people for real. If not, we're no better than these whited sepulchers. Part of the problem is, is that people get burnt out. Because honestly, in any group, you know, used to it was the 80 20 rule. 80% of the work got done by 20% of the people. I'm, it's like a 90-10 rule nowadays. Everybody's so busy. And, but, but what happens is the doers in the church get burnt out. And they become used to's. Or they become bitter. And, and so it, it, you just get tired. You know, it, sometimes... Working in church is, is kind of like watching construction jobs getting done. You got one guy in the hole with the shovel and 15 guys sitting around supervising. And the guy in the hole doesn't even realize that the roach coach pulled up and everybody's in line getting lunch. And he's over here working. Everybody else comes back. They got a little taco sauce hanging down over here. And, you know, they come back smelling like hamburgers and french fries. And some poor slob over here is just breaking his back. And sometimes it's that way even in serving the Lord. The same people doing everything. You know, Jesus said, you, you could tell, he said, every plant, verse 13, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Listen, don't be a pretend Christian. Don't be a pretend believer. Just because you can put on your church costume and you learned how to tie a tie, I remember when I learned how to tie a tie, Brother Edgar Graham taught me how to tie a tie. God called me to preach, and I figured clip-ons were not going to cut it for Jesus. So I, I was like, how do you tie the tie? Because all I was doing before was just clip, and it was done. And I don't know, they might make fun of me at school. And he taught me how to tie a half Windsor and a full Windsor. Man, I was all excited. Learned how to tie a tie. That tie didn't do anything for my heart. 
We've known a lot of young people come along. Hey, they learn how to tie a tie or they get real smart. They get you to tie the tie one time and then they don't ever untie it all the way. They just, I'm telling you right now, some people have, be honest, if you have a tie at home that's already tied hanging in your closet, raise your hand. Don't you lie to me. Look at that, hands going around. I see those hands. Amen. All right, bless God. <laughs> yeah, my kids, my kids, I ain't tying this every time. Just pull that over your head. That's old Bible college trick. And we had one at school. We had a fluorescent pink tie. And I took a black marks a lot and put, I forgot. Somebody show up for Bible college. Somebody, oh, I forgot my tie. So I got one. They didn't forget twice. Walk around all day with, I forgot on. But, you know, here's our problem. We're Baptist. If you can tie a tie, he must be spiritual. And if you can take a girl and make her look like she just fell out of, out of an episode of uh, uh, Anne of Green Gables or Little House on the Prairies, all of a sudden she looks spiritual. Looks don't matter. Being real is what matters. The, the reason that the church isn't changing the city is because the city has changed the churches too much. And the reason, hey, listen, we're not going to change the world by being worldly. But it doesn't have to do with, and listen, I'm for high dress standards, don't get me wrong, but your church costume is not going to help you change the world. Having a church costume is not going to help you serve the Lord. In fact, in our city, you look like a Jehovah's Witness if you wear a tie going up on La Migra. We got a call, somebody, some bus kid called us one day and said, Preacher, my grandpa just died. I was like, oh no, where did he live? In the, my bedroom. He lived there at the house. At the apartment, I said, buddy, we are about to have church. I'm so sorry. Let me pray with you right now. Is your mama right there? And I got him and his mom on the phone. I prayed with them. I said, I'll be by right after church. So they came and they took grandpa and took him away while we were at church. As soon as it got over, I took one of the guys. We drove over there, pulled up in my truck pretty quick, two shirts and tie. Even a big guy like me, they don't care. They don't know the difference. I get out, two white shirts and ties. And we pulled up, and there's like 15 people. By the time I turned it off, got out, and started walking, there's two guys. I mean, it was just, no, no guys. It was all, it was the, the two women. And I walked up, and she's like, preacher. I said, where did everybody go? And she's like, Tony, go tell your dad it's just the preacher. And all of a sudden, everybody comes filtering back out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, that is my neighborhood right there, man. That's like... Quick, everybody run. That's the cry of my people, man. <laughs> we just wanted to go pray with them. But you go knocking on doors around here in a white shirt and tie. I had, I had a missionary come with me one day, and I could tell he was offended because I wasn't wearing a shirt and tie. So I just went. We just knocked. Nobody answered. Leave a track. Go next door. Finally, he said, why won't they answer the door? I could see them right there. I'm waving at them. They won't come to the door. I said, you want the truth? They think you're a cop. He's like, why? I said, because you're wearing that tie. He said, I was trained to wear a tie. I said, me too. That guy took a tie off, rolled it up, put it in his pocket. We went down one side of the street and the other. We got to lead four people to the Lord. After that, this is great. Two of them were in a tree. <laughs> you can't not answer the tree. It was a couple of older teenagers up in a tree, man. We just started talking to them, and they came down. We, we got to, they, they trusted in the Lord. It was exciting. There's times that I will wear a Hawaiian shirt. Most of the time, I wear like our daycare uniform. I have a it says Texas Lighthouse. I love those shirts. And I, I wear them everywhere. Most of the time, that's, I'll just wear those. But sometimes I'll just wear a Hawaiian shirt. Because listen, you wear shirts and ties. They either think you're a cop or Jehovah's Witnesses or immigration or somebody with the IRS or somebody. They don't want to talk to you. A fat guy in a Hawaiian shirt, they just want to see what you're talking about. <laughs> I may not get to talk long, but I'm going to get to talk some. 
And so we just go up and just talk. Listen, I don't want people to go to hell because I think I have to wear a tie walking up and down the streets. And I don't want people to go to hell because they put on a costume. See, my desire is that you would deal with your salvation. I don't know whether you're saved. You, listen, everybody looks different. Some of y'all are tall. Some of y'all are short. Some of y'all are real skinny. Some of y'all are big fat. Hey, so y'all, y'all different. Y'all young and old and, and different. I, don't, I can't tell. I know I'm saved. I was there when I got saved. The last I was there when you got saved, even then I couldn't see inside your heart. So I don't know. You may be trying to plant yourself in with the flowers. Look, look, look at me. Uh, I, I'm right here with all the other flowers. You ain't making no more flowers. Ain't no life in you. There's a reason why a lot of people don't do anything for the Lord. because they, they don't belong to the Lord. And so what ends up happening, the preacher gets satisfied. and says, okay, these guys are good. Hey, it's Wednesday night crowd. They're all good. I'm not going to worry about it. Let me just go water the flowers. And some of them are fake flowers. And then here's what happens. You're like, oh, I should tell him I'm not saved. Oh, I should, I should go forward and tell him I'm not saved and I need to get saved. But then it gets awkward. Because now all of a sudden you've learned some of the songs. You know, onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will behold. You're like, I memorized that song. You still ain't saved. You're just a fake flower that knows the words. Guys, that little old lady would have felt pretty foolish had she realized she was watering fake flowers. But her water in the fake flowers didn't really hurt anything. If I'm watering fake flowers, it matters for all eternity. If I'm watering fake flowers, fake flowers go to hell. The last thing I want to do is see people I know and love going to hell because they were fake flowers and it just felt awkward. Awkward. Dude, you got saved tonight, we would rejoice. Hey, lady, you got your heart right tonight, we would be thrilled. I'll tell you what's awkward. Standing before a holy and a righteous Savior. Talking about, but I knew all the words to the hymns. I, I could find, I, I could find Matthew 15 before the preacher did. I, I did, I did good stuff for you. I picked up trash out on the, around the church. I saw a mess in the bathroom. I cleaned it up. I, I cleaned the spot off the window. You were a fake flower. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man call, cometh unto the Father, but by me." You've got to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and not who you are or, no, or what you've done. Real quick, go to Colossians. Colossians chapter number 2 and we'll get out of here. Colossians chapter number 2. Look at verse 6. As ye therefore, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. Okay, you don't need to read any more if you've not received Jesus Christ the Lord. But if you have received him, so walk ye in him. Say, so how do you do that? Y'all always ask the right questions. Look at the next verse. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Fake flowers don't get rooted in. Fake flowers don't grow. 
They sit, they do nothing, and they fade until they're thrown in the trash. That is not the way to define the Christian life. As ye have received the Lord Jesus Christ, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith as you've been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. You know what no fake flower does? Abound. Abound. Abounding is not like, well, I'm making a... No, abounding is like boom, boom. I mean, it's big. It's, it's abounding. Making great strides. Getting out there. That's what God wants from your life. But you can't do that if you're a fake flower. And if you're here tonight and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, listen, I'm not mad at you. I'm just praying you'll be honest. If you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I'm just praying you'll be honest before it is eternally too late. Attended a memorial service today for a 43-year-old guy. On the way there, heard a news story about a guy not even driving a passenger in, in a car, in a van, riding down the road, and a bunch of idiots up on a bridge dropping rocks down. Just sitting there, chit-chatting about nothing. And a rock came through the windshield, hit him in the face and the chest, dead on arrival. Now, unless God slipped you a note that said you've got another 20 years, you may not have another 20 minutes. Amen. One of the most dangerous things we do is pull out of this parking lot and drive down these roads. I hear sirens all day and all night. We see ambulances all day and all night. I'm friends with one of the undertakers up the street. Business is booming. I hope you have another 20 years. Some of y'all hope you have another 80 years. But I got news for you, honey. You may not make it through tonight. I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying, I, I don't care what your wife thinks. I don't care what your husband thinks. I don't care what your kids think. I don't care what your mom and daddy think. If you're here and you've not been saved, and you know, only you and God know. But if you know it, good night of living, let's do something about it. Let us show you in the Scriptures how to be saved. Because the last thing I want to do is water fake flowers. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. Lord, I just pray that you'd bless now your word. We've, we've read it. We're, hey, as believers, we're to be rooted and built up and abounding. If not, why not? Father, there could be somebody here tonight that's not saved. They're a fake flower. They're going to be plucked up, plucked up and thrown out. All of that can change. As the first note of the song plays, I pray you'd give courage for them just to step out and come. Let a, a man show a man and a woman show a woman how to know for sure that heaven's their home. Whatever the need tonight, Lord, I pray that you'd have your way. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name.